We'd like to welcome everyone today to Central Baptist Church in Woodbridge, Virginia. I'm Pastor Brad Winnegar, and this is the first Sunday in November, November the 7th, 2021. Uh, it is Time Change Sunday. Many of you got an extra hour of sleep, and how many of you enjoyed that? Say amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. All right. You're not going to get it while you're here. I'm going to keep you awake. All right. That's my promise to you. I'd like to welcome all of our live stream folks, folks that are viewing right now on YouTube and those that will be in the future. This is also a special day for us to honor our faithful veterans. You know, this Thursday is Veterans Day. And one of the shame, uh, the great shames of, of losing our sense of history is that we lose important lessons that are learned. Now listen up, young people. There was a war known as the Great War. It was supposed to be the war to end all wars. It didn't. But it is now known as World War I, and on the 11th day, the 11th hour of the 11th month, uh, the armistice was, was signed and, and uh, hostilities ceased between the powers in Europe and here in the West. And as a result of that, we have ever after had a special day of observance. It now is known as by the special name of Veterans Day, but it has been known by various names and yet, when you lose history, you lose so much. Uh, I was reading this. Now, this is not the most recent experience in Afghanistan, but back in 1996, the London Times cried, lost forever, a nation's heritage looted by its own people. Afghanistan's National Museum in Kabul is rubble, said the newspaper. It once held of, of Earth's greatest multicultural antique collections, Persian, Indian, Chinese, Central Asian, and beyond. But Muhaddin uh, uh, rebels blasted into vaults and shattered display cases, looted the relics, and sold them here and there around the world for quick cash. Rockets slammed into the museum's roof, burying ancient bronzes under tons of debris. Pottery from uh, prehistory was thrown into bags like cheap china. The Bagram collection, one of the greatest archaeological finds of the 20th century, disappeared. Nearly 40,000 coins, some of the world's oldest, vanished. The museum, once a repository for Afghan history, became a military post, and the storied past has now been ruined by the unbridled present. Now, I, I'd like to just draw attention to that. It's important for us. One of the things about history that we need to learn is that we don't learn from history. We need to learn from history. We have a rich heritage in this nation, and around the world there are many cultures that uh, are not just the product of, of of an overnight experience, but rather decades, even centuries of time. When a nation loses its history, there is no sense, that sense of cohesiveness and heritage, and with no heritage from the past, there's no legacy to pass on for the future. I'm very thankful for our military, uh, because they are not the thugs that have been pictured by the far left, but rather these are the keepers of peace by strength, and uh, the, the folks who have pervaded democracy around the world. I thank God for every military person, past and present. And we do acknowledge them here at Central Baptist Church, and we honor them because the Bible says to render honor and tribute where it is due. We have special days, and we do differentiate. For example, in the middle of May, there is a, a week uh, on which we celebrate our current armed forces. It's Armed Forces Sunday. And then, whether it's the fourth or fifth uh, Sunday, we have Memorial Day for those who have died, those who have been in the service of their country and have died. And so we acknowledge them. We have a special day. And now, in uh, November, 11th hour, 11th, uh, 11th day, 11th month, is, of course, now Veterans Day it has been known by other names previously. But we honor all those uh, who have served in the past. We also acknowledge uh, the 4th of July as a very special patriotic day and a President's Day as well. And other, other special days. We wear red, white, and blue. We wear the, uh, the uh, flag attire and we have the flag in clear view. And this is not just for show. We believe it deeply. We believe in the importance of it. And we honor the faithful veterans who have served. Now, we do so, even though each day is designated differently, we do so collectively. So today we are honoring 
those who are alive and serving, those who have served and are alive, and those who have passed on. We honor all of them today. You have a wonderful table display. How many of you had a chance to see that table on the way in? Isn't that amazing? Isn't it? Let's give those folks a hand. Amen. God bless them for their service to our country. You know that we get to sit here in comfort today because of them. And it's what's been accomplished in our behalf. We owe so many people. and We owe great thanks and, and uh, we're grateful people. We want to acknowledge that as well. So how do we honor our veterans? How do we honor those who have bravely served? First of all, we remember. We constantly call to remembrance those individuals and what they did, what their cost uh, was of that great debt that was paid. And then we recognize the principles. We recognize the principles. And then we, we pray to repeat or reproduce these in generations to follow. And that's what a legacy is. That's what a heritage is. And we're pleased with it. Now, here's how we look at the entire matter of honoring folks and honoring institutions at our church. We recognize that every human being, with the exception of Jesus Christ, is flawed. Every one of us. And everything that we do is flawed. We understand that. And there are things that have to be worked out and fixed. We understand that. And we don't minimize those. In, in some areas, we've got a long ways to go. But in some areas, we've come a long ways. And therefore, I'm saying to you, we do not constantly put an asterisk next to every celebration or quotes around it because imperfect people are involved or have been involved in the past. We already acknowledge that. If we're in a court of law, we go ahead. Prosecution, we stipulate that. Guilty as charged. Guilty as charged. But there is a God in heaven. And today we acknowledge Him. And we give Him the glory for America. And we ask His help that we might ever improve that we might ever do better. And it starts on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Brother, I don't want anything to happen to you that I wouldn't want to happen to me. That's the way it's got to be, regardless of who we are, regardless of, of background. Uh, here's, here's a man that comes from uh, the foothills of Virginia, down in the country. This is a man, don't throw anything, was born in California. We're 3,000 miles apart in geography. But we, we've got the same Jesus. Amen. Jesus Christ is our Savior. We acknowledge the same God. We worship in the same church. There's absolutely nothing that separates us except our sin. And we confess that. We get that right with God. Come on now. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Having said that, we are going to take a few moments to honor all of our military. But first, we're going to start out the right way, with the Word of God, and then with the pledge, with our national anthem. It says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, Paul writing to Timothy, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Amen and amen. I like that. All right, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask that you stand with me right now. We're going to face this American flag. We're going to pledge allegiance. Would you stand with me, please? Young people, stand at attention. Ready, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Remain standing. We're going to sing one verse of our national anthem. Number 131, if you need to turn there to sing, shall we?
for prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this wonderful gift that you've given us, the greatest nation on earth. We confess our sin. We confess our flaws, but we ask for your help. We are in desperate need of you, Lord. Would you continue to be with us? Would you continue to work through us? And from the President of the United States down to the, to the very least among us, would you, would you lead us and guide us? I pray that everyone will know Jesus as personal Savior and have a transformed life. I pray that everyone will acknowledge you daily and trust in you and walk by faith and not by sight. And Lord, continue to bless our nation. Help us, Lord. Protect us from our own worst devices, from our own worst selves, and help us to serve. Help us to love our brother and our sister. Help us to treat one another better than we treat ourselves. And help us to give you the glory and constantly talk about Jesus. And with his name on our lips, we say it. In Jesus' name and all God's people said. Amen. Now, while you're standing, would you do something for me? Take your burgundy book, please. Take your burgundy book. I'm going to ask that we assemble a very special singing group. And this is going to be just off the cuff, unrehearsed. I'm going to ask that if you are a military person, past or present, or if you had someone in your family, for example, my uncle served honorably in World War II. Our niece and her son served honorably in the Middle East. And I tear up when I think about it because I shed not one drop of blood. But they served. They served. So I'm related. I'm taking no glory or credit for myself. But I'm going to be in this group because I'm, I'm near kin. That's it. So here it is. If you served... Spouse, family member, near relative serve, <clears throat> and if you're a pretty good singer. Whether you are or not, I need you to come on up because what we're going to do is we're going to bring our hymnals. I'm going to ask you to come on up to the platform and form a choir because not this song, but the next song you're going to sing with us. Now, I need your help. I don't want to sing a solo. If you are, come on now, stop shaking your head back there. All right, okay. If you are military, past or present, or you have relatives, family, or you're just a good singer and you want to sing something good and help us out, choir, I need all of our choir, our mixed vocal. Come on up, and if you would, find your places on up here. Come on. Would you come on up? Come on up. Come on up. And I'm going to ask everybody else to please take your burgundy book, and we're going to sing as they come. Number 337, when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Sing it with me. Oh, when we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory He sheds on our way. While we do His good will, He abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and hope. All the ladies and girls on the second, not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the sky, but his smile quickly drives it away. Not a doubt or a fear, not a sign or a tear. singing now trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in jesus but to trust and all the men and the boys on the third not a burden we bear not a sorrow we share but our toil he doth richly repay not a grief nor a loss, not a frown or a cross, but is blessed if we trust and obey. Everyone now, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Verse 4, but we never can prove the delights of until all on the altar we lay. For 
the favor he shows and the joy he bestows are for them who will trust and obey. Everyone, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust. And everybody take a deep breath and in fellowship sweet, land in fellowship sweet. Sit at his feet, or we'll walk by his side in the way. What he says we will do, where he sends we will go. Never be only trust and obey. Sing it out, trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. But to trust and obey. Great singing. You and the audience may be seated. We're going to be favored with a very, very special song. Now, if you were listening to the devotional this morning from the Shepherd of the Sheep, I did my take on this song, but the choir is going to do a much better job. This choir is comprised of those past and current uh, military and those who are dependents and related in some way, and this is a song that stirs us. We are, as Christian soldiers, uh, we are facing a tremendous spiritual battle even now as we stand here today. And so we need to do what Paul said, having done all to stand. Will you listen as the choir sings? I'm going to tell you, that's a choir. Amen. You're all hired, okay? All right. We're going to have them go down instruments. Let's play it right one more time. Ready? Let's play it. Thank you so much. Great job. Great job. Wow! 
we had some good voices up here and great patriots. Let's give them another hand. Amen. Thank you so much. And thank you, ladies, for playing. That was fantastic. I love that. Thank you, sound people, everybody who made that such a great success. We got some other things. Before we get back into veterans and military, let me just say that last Sunday was such a blessing on our 58th anniversary as a church. How many of you had the privilege of, of being here or viewing it live stream? Wasn't it a blessing? 58 years God has blessed us, and uh, we might be able to find a few of these souvenirs around, but we did receive some cards, and one we received from uh, Dave and Putter Weeks. Happy 58th anniversary. You know, they, they work uh, in uh, missions to the cults. That's a long time to be giving yourselves to the Lord's ministry. Thanks, each of you, so much for your faithfulness. Brother Brad, he's talking to me. Thanks for being my friend and church family. Putter and I like to, to thank each of you for being so kind and gracious to us for your faithful support and prayers these many years. Happy Thanksgiving, and uh, have a Christ-filled and very Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, Dave and Putter. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, say it with me. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Absolutely. Amen and amen. Some other business we want to take care of. Down on the front, when we're through with the service today, I want you to make your way down here and sign up for at least one, if not two, different food categories because we're going to get together on November the 20th, that's coming up, not next week, but the week after that, on Saturday at 4 o'clock, and we're going to have a wonderful Thanksgiving share and care dinner, and we want you to bring uh, some platters of meat, some side dishes, some uh, salads, some desserts, but sign up down here on this side. I want you to come down and make sure you sign up. The leaders will be getting back with you, making sure that we have enough of everything, and uh, you may be asked to, to help out if there's a shortage in one area or another. And let's have just a wonderful time. This is our first time to come together. People call it pot luck. We don't believe in luck. It's pot grace. Amen. Going to have a great time and, and testimonies. Praise the Lord. Then that next Sunday, the next night, we're going to have testimony Sunday night. And then the next Wednesday, we're going to have Thanksgiving Eve candlelight right here. That's the day before Thanksgiving. So that's coming up and a lot of other things coming up thereafter. Now, Christmas is coming, but our missionaries need to hear from us. And without writing anything extra, just putting your family name, put your, your names on the sheet that's on this side, come on down, make sure you alternate the colors, and no kids now, just uh, adults doing this, please, family by family. And uh, when you fill out the front side there, we have the rear, the reverse side. Copies of this uh, letter from Central Baptist to our missionaries will be made and sent out to 100 plus, 150 missionaries, praise the Lord. And so looking forward to uh, greeting them in a proper way. We do pray for them, and uh, we're very thankful for all the missionaries that this church supports and for all of you who are faithful in your missionary support. Now, next Saturday, I mentioned uh, two Saturdays up, but next Saturday at 3 o'clock, we have Bible Institute 1603. It'll be online only, so you need to tune in, get that information uh, from Tyler and it will be session 1603. It's the one that we transition from Isaac into the life of Jacob. Now, we've seen a little bit about Jacob, but many lessons, many principles are being taught. That's so very, very important. I want you to get that. Uh, in our giving, we praise God for your faithful giving. Uh, we are uh, going to be receiving an offering after a while, and that offering will be not only the tithes and offerings of God's people, but also this special project, Give a Christmas Gift to Jesus. Uh, these funds have been used already, some of them, as we've done some upgrades, and I want you to help us out with that. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. If you don't have a bulletin, they're in the back. You can get one right now if you want to. If you're viewing online, just uh, scroll down and tap the proper place, and you can get a copy, a digital copy, of this wonderful bulletin. Today we honor our faithful veterans. And I like what it says about stewards. I talked about that in Sunday school. We've got something from Joe Gibbs, three-time Super Bowl champion and NASCAR champion. 
He's talking about uh, letting God be in charge of our life. We've got uh, something from Marine General Chesty Puller, a very famous Marine General. We need to be in the trenches where the problems and frustrations can be understood and dealt with. Good, good material here. Oswald Chambers, when you meet with difficulties, don't give up, don't quit, don't compromise. Keep on going. Amen. And we've got the words to loyalty to Christ. And uh, Vance Havner said, God called us to play the game, not to keep the score. I like that. That is so true. God called us to, play the, to, to serve, to work, and do the work of the Lord. Part of the blessing and the honor that we have as Christians and as a church is to pray for one another. And I don't know how many of you have a regular prayer time each day, but you should keep a prayer list. You should have some quiet time. I sang about that time alone uh, with Jesus. I sang a, an original song this past week on devotions, and that's so important. But as a corporate body, we need to pray as well. And uh, right now, I'd like you, if you have a special prayer request that you don't mind giving in 10 words or less, I know I'm taking a chance. We're on the air. So no specific details. Keep it real general. I want you to stand up uh, right over here. You got a prayer request? Stand up, lady. Come on. Stand up. What's your prayer request? Ten words or less, please. All right, for a healing. He's got cancer. All right. Okay, yes. Okay, all right. I would, that you would pray for... Uh, the man I led to Christ, 1979, who's been in prison for over, ha well, half a century, 55 years. He's been in prison. His name is Jack Allen. He's a born-again Christian. He has a Bible study and a prayer group in South Carolina prison and uh, has not been granted parole, but has now been diagnosed with something very severe. And we'll have a biopsy on Wednesday. I would pray that it might not be cancer, but if it is cancer, uh, they say he's probably got less than a year to live, that he might finish his course with joy. Pray for Jack Allen. Pray for Jack Allen. Somebody else. Yes, ma'am. Ann. Okay. Okay. Somebody else. Prayer request. Prayer request. Yes. Gene is traveling to Ohio. Yes. Pray for Gene. Amen. Somebody else. Yes, go ahead. Amen. 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 All right. So we've had requests about healing, desiring healing. God's healing in the past. God continued to heal. If it's His will, I'm going to pray to that end. Anybody else? Prayer requests. Yes. Get folks saved, amen, in our military. They need Jesus, yes. Anybody else? Yes. For our country. Somebody else? Yes. Ann Miller. Okay, we, we know. Been there. Yeah. Anybody? Yes, ma'am. For your thyroid, okay. Anybody else? How many of you believe God answers prayer? Amen. Amen. I want you to join me right now. You can pray aloud or silently as I pray. Lord Jesus, in your name we come to you now, and we thank you that you hear and answer our prayers according to your perfect will. But we acknowledge you first and foremost as the creator and the sustainer of all that is a living, and we thank you, Lord, that you have the power right now to heal every disease, every illness, if it is your will or to teach us the lessons that we need uh, to learn in dependence of, of you, Lord. We pray for soldiers and, and for the military to be saved, be protected. We pray for our nation. Uh, we pray for those that uh, are very close to passing over. I pray they might know Jesus as their Savior. You might give them comfort and help the caregivers. Lord, that's not easy. And afterwards, there's, there's such a, an emptiness there. And I pray that you'll fill that emptiness with yourself. Thank you, Lord, that you hear our prayers. Thank you, Lord, that you've been so gracious to us. Thank you that you are a God who keeps 
His Word. And we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen, amen and Amen. All right. I'm going to ask Tyler. Where are you, Tyler? Come on up. And as Tyler is coming, I'm going to ask you to do this. If, uh, if you have in the past or are in the present in the service of your country, would you raise your hand, please? Have in the past or are in the present in the service of your country. Now, I know for some of you this is difficult because your military experience has not always been roses. It's not always been nice. Some of you didn't know Jesus at the time. But we say thank you. Amen. On this Veterans Day, you may put your hands down. How many of you have family, relatives who in the past have served or are now serving? Raise your hands. Thank you. Thank you. Convey that to them. Thank you. We can never repay you. We thank you. And we appreciate you. Out on the table, there are some pictures that speak volumes. I want to say hello again to Charles and Melissa Toro and the kids. They're viewing from distance. Charles is one of our wounded warriors. Thank you. And God's going to have his way in that healing. Amen. Absolutely. There are others we could speak of and mention, but I'm going to ask Tyler to come over and help me out. Write down here frequently an elderly gentleman is seated with his wife, but he's not here right now. Yes, sir. I'm speaking of Pastor William Harps. And Pastor Harps is now how old? 92. 92. 92. You've had the joy and privilege of, of helping and dealing in his situation, and I thank you, and the church thanks you, Tyler, for being there, um, and uh, I appreciate it personally. Is Brother Harps watching right now, do you think? I hope so. <laughs> I hope so, too. Brother Harps, uh, 92 years of age, and tell us a little bit about uh, his life and his service for God and country, if you would, please. Yes, so I've been able to spend a lot of time with Pastor Harps over the last... Uh, month or month and a half now since he made his fall and broke his hip and his leg and he's recovering well I was actually over there this morning got to speak with him and he's looking a lot better he's at home which is nice but Pastor Harps was able to tell me a lot of his stories of of his time in the past he was born in 1930 so that makes him almost 92 uh, he was saved at the age of eight or nine he couldn't remember exactly when but at a young age he was saved and God called him into a ministry um, throughout his service in the military. He served in both the Army and the Marine Corps in his service. He served in the Army from 1951 to 1953, and then immediately went right into the Marine Corps from 1953 to 1981. So that's 33, about 33 years of service that he did for our country. And while he was in the Marine Corps, he did a lot of his, uh, his tours. He went to uh, Korea during the Korean War, and I'll, I'll share a story about that in a little bit. He went to the Vietnam War, and he served in the Vietnam War as well. He had many commendations, of, many of which you may actually be able to look in his booklet that he gave me to use today. Uh, he has um, station, been stationed many different places. He couldn't exactly remember all the places. A lot of his memorabilia is from San Diego when he, when he was stationed out there. But when he came over to Quantico, he then retired and then began to pastor at Dean Divers Baptist Church in Manassas, which is a historical church of Genadine, Genadine is the name. And uh, so he was able to serve out there and then retired as a pastor from there. Throughout his entire service, wherever he was, he was what's called an itinerant preacher. And so he would go to a church that didn't have a pastor or didn't have a normal uh, pastor in service, and he would preach, and he would teach, and he would serve there. And so everywhere he was in the military, whether it was here or overseas, he was always constantly preaching. And that's a testament to him and his life. He's one of the strongest men I have ever been able to interact with. I mean, at 91, it's not likely that you're going to survive a broken hip, but he's been excelling. Ever since he was a little baby, the doctor said the day he was born, 
that he would not survive the night. And his aunt took him and, he, and rocked him and sang to him and prayed for him. And the next morning, the Amen. doctor came and he said, are you ready to bury this child? And his aunt said, what are you talking about? He's smiling. He's Amen. alive. Amen. And for 92 years since, he has been very, very strong. He has survived the Korean War, the Vietnam War. He's survived some things in his life in the military due to racism, due to all kinds of difficulties as being, you know, a, a black man in the service for his country. And we thank him for that. Amen. One great story that he told me about the Korean War was very outstanding. He was in Korea, and uh, they were on the base there. And this is obviously during the Korean War when the Chinese and the North Koreans were coming towards South Korea and trying to take over the land there. And he was in line to go to the bathroom. And he was the next, mer the next man to go. And some other man came in front of him, pushed him out of the way, and said, it's my turn. So that man went to the bathroom. All of a sudden, a mortar comes and destroys the entire bathroom. Brother Harps, Pastor Harps, was saved in that encounter from death. The poor man was not, but he was saved, and he was able to then tell me all of, that, all of those stories. He, yeah. he drove in tanks. He was, he was one of our strong military men Amen. in the Korean and Vietnam War. And we salute today all of our veterans, but we salute Pastor William Harps. Let's give him a hand. Thank you. Amen. And there is a, a total equality in our church in every respect. And I would say among the five branches, past and present, all the family members, dependents, widows, widowers, God bless all of you. Thank you so much for your service, what it means to us uh, in a practical way, what it means to us spiritually, and we are grateful as a nation. Thank you so much. I want you to take your Bibles, please. And for the time that remains, I would like to speak to you from our text, which is found in 2 Timothy chapter 2. We made references to Ephesians chapter 6, putting on the whole armor of God, which, of course, has been a text in the past and would be appropriate as we refer to these things today. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. The Apostle Paul is writing this second letter by inspiration to his protege, Timothy. And we need to understand that in those times and in this time, there is a constant need for us to be aware of why we are here. At least some and in many cases, most of the reasons why we are here is because of those who are coming after us. There are those who will follow us. I'm telling you right now that even though this nation, even though uh, this world uh, gives us sometimes a moment to pause and to be just a little uh, fearful and a little concerned, I want you to know that unless Jesus Christ himself comes, and intervenes, things next year and beyond and beyond and beyond will continue and we will have opportunities to serve in whatever circumstances we find ourselves. So we have to have a mentality, we have to have a mindset of those who are going to continue on. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to quit. Why? First of all, God has called me and I want to be obedient to Him. Can I get an amen on that? Number two, others are observing. And for the sake of those who will come behind me, I cannot give up. I cannot quit. I do not own the luxury of moving to the right or to the left and diverting my path in any way. I must continue on the path that God has laid out for me and serve Him with the faithfulness by His grace that He provides because others are observing. Someday I'll stand before him and I hopefully hear, well done, good and faithful servant. He, he doesn't require us to be good looking. He doesn't require us to be well off. He doesn't require us to be world famous. He doesn't require any of those things. He does require us to be faithful. Don't quit. Don't give up. Don't slow down. Don't spin your wheels. 
Keep on going by the grace of God and for His glory. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. How can we please God who's chosen us to be spiritual soldiers? Number one, by being strong. You say, how can you be strong? Hold your place there. Go back to Joshua chapter 1. Tonight I'll be speaking from the end of the book of Joshua. Today from the beginning. Joshua has just been passed the torch from Moses. And in Joshua chapter 1, in verse number 7, Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. You got to be in the book. You got to believe it. We have to be people of the book. We've got to stand upon the word of God. That's how we stand up, stand up for Jesus. We don't diverge from it at all. Those who think because COVID was thrown their way or because some other situation, economic or otherwise, has uh, become a, an obstacle or a stumbling block, that now they've got to come up with something creative to do church, are sadly mistaken. The Lord's church is just that. It belongs to Him. It's not mine to do with what I want to. It's not yours to do. If everybody gathered together and said, we're going to take a vote and change the course of this church, I would stand up alone and I would say, you will not as long as I'm standing here. You will not. I will not allow a vote to change the course of this church. And you can do what you want to, but you won't stop me. God has given us a commission. You say, that man means business. That, mean, that man does mean business. And you ought to mean business too. You ought to say, this is where our family stands on the word. This is where our church stands on the word. This is where our country ought to stand on the word. God help us to continue on to be strong and of a good courage. Verse 8 of Joshua 1, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. It needs to be constant. Why do you think we start with the Bible every service? Why do you think we quote throughout the service? Why do you think we close with the Bible? Why do you think? Because the Word of God is the basis for what we believe and what we practice. I believe there are no mistakes in this book. I believe it is perfect from cover to cover. I have no doubts whatsoever that God has a plan for me, for my family, for this church, for this nation, for this world. And God helping us, we're going to obey what it says. Amen. The Bible is so important. Thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then sh thou shalt have good success. The only place in the King James Bible you find the word success is in conjunction with the Word of God, internalizing it, meditating upon it. The meditation isn't something spooky. It isn't only mental. The meditation means to chew on it, to chew on it, to chew on it. Like a cow chews her cud. Chew on it, bring it up, chew on it, chew on it, chew on it. It becomes a part of the fabric of the character of our very life and being. Verse 9, have not I commanded thee. This is not a choice. This is not a choice. This is a commandment. Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. The be, the be, the be is because of the is that's in that verse. You say, preacher, can I quote you on that? You absolutely. You can take that to the bank of heaven. All those things that we're told to be, that we're commanded to be, is because of who he is. God doesn't change. We shouldn't change either. So back there in 2 Timothy chapter 2, we're to be strong. I'm going to come back to that. We sang trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. That's what Dave and Putter Weeks wrote in their card uh, on the 58th anniversary of our church. Trust, trust in the Lord. Obey. We're on this mission together. We're... We're in this together. And there are times when you and I may not see things eye to eye, but we see the mission. We, we see the calling. We see, we see what God has commanded. We see what the Word of God says. We agree on that. So you can like whatever color, whatever, whatever choice that you like. Uh, maybe you like blue. Maybe you like green. I don't know what color you like. 
You may like vanilla or chocolate or strawberry or raspberry, and I might not. It doesn't matter if we agree on those things. What matters is that we agree on Jesus. What matters is we're going the same direction together for the glory of God. Now, as it says over there in our scripture, one more time, here we go. 2 Timothy chapter 2, and look at verse 2. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou commit. That's a banking term. That's like putting a deposit in. Commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. There's at least three or four generations there. And what Paul is saying, in order for us to please God, first of all, we have to be strong with the strength that he gives us, the grace that he gives us. Number two, we need to pass the torch. We need to pass the torch. We need to be training the next generation by everything we say and do, and do it on purpose. Do it deliberately. Train them to carry on. You don't know when God's going to call you home. I don't know when God's going to call me home. It is my goal here. Number two is to train the next generation. Number three, thou therefore endure, look at that word, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. To endure hardness means to put up with things that are not ideal. Put up with things that are difficult. Live with the fact that there are obstacles out there. And if God didn't give us hard times and difficult times and problems, we wouldn't know that we could trust Him to bring us through them. You and I would not have the confidence that we have in Almighty God. You say, but God is God. God is great. But what if you never had a problem? What if you never had a difficulty? What if you never had a challenge? You wouldn't know how great God is. But you know on a personal level because you've trusted Him. Endure hardness. You say, I don't know if I'm going to get through. Well, here's the win-win way to look at this. If we trust Him and by His grace He brings us through, we're going to come out of it better, not bitter. And if we don't make it through, if we die and go to heaven, it's win-win. I'm looking forward to going to heaven. Amen. All right, number four, verse four. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. We need to guard, here it is, number four, guard against distractions. These folks that are trying everything creative that they possibly can during these difficult times, diverting from the word of God, making a horrible mistake because they have ceased to be what God called them to be. They've, they've swept away the foundation. They've swept away the superstructure. They've scorched earth the entire thing and started over from scratch, and they think, hey, this is going to be fine. Listen, <clears throat> today at 5 o'clock, at 5 o'clock, I am going to live stream a leadership meeting. I want you to tune in. And we are not going to be the ones to scorch earth anything. But people say, when are we going to do this ministry? When are we going to do that? How are we going to do this? How are we going to do that? I'm going to let you in on some things today at 5 o'clock. You need to tune in. It'll be live stream. You know how to do that. Just hit the button. Live stream. Listen, I won't keep you all night. I'm going to talk about some serious things. We're in transition period right now, coming up on 2022. And watch out, Satan. Watch out, world. Watch out, flesh, because here we come. 2022, we're in transition. I want you to listen at 5 o'clock today. But we're not going to start something over just to be creative, just to do it our way. Not at all. Not at all. Everything needs to be done decently and in order God's way. He said to Joshua, Be strong and of a good courage. Courage is not simply a shallow or momentary feeling in the heat of the battle. It's something far more than that. There was a little woman by the name of Mary Slessor. She began a remarkable missionary career in what is now Nigeria. And here's what she said. Lord, the task is impossible for me but not for thee. For me, but not for thee. Lead the way, and I will follow. Why should I fear? I'm on a royal mission, 
I am in the service of the King of Kings. Amen. King Jesus just depends on whether you put him on the throne or not. Is he on the throne of your life? Is he in charge? Thank God for those who have acknowledged him as Lord of their life. My uncle Milton was a quiet, soft-spoken man. He spent his civilian career as a high school teacher and was not, was not your military type in that sense, not militant at all. But he served faithfully in the Pacific Theater in World War II. He was the baby, the only boy of the Jacobson home in tiny Oldham, South Dakota. His father, my grandpa Jake, Alfred Jacobson, had come over from Norway and scratched out a living from nothing, just from dirt in that dust bowl. He had a haberdashery. I don't know how many of you know what a haberdashery is. It's a store that's got a little bit of everything. My mom, who was second of the three children, used to work behind the counter so she could earn enough for her own candy from the candy dish on the counter. They sold a little bit of everything. They had work boots and jeans and they had nice clothes and they had, they had uh, tools and they had uh, uh, staples and, and all kinds of things that, would be, that you would find in a, a store uh, that would be much larger, but it was a tiny little store. And in that environment, my uncle was raised, raised by the most honest man. They said Jake was the most honest man in the county, the most honest man, the most generous man. He was the lead deacon in his Baptist church. And he would, he would fire up the, the stove for the services in those cold South Dakota winter Sunday mornings. And he'd put out the fire. And after the flame went out, he'd look down. He'd look down the street and he'd see the Pentecostal church was still meeting. He'd go down there and he'd pray with them and rejoice with them too. He was a lay preacher, a soul winner. My grandma, as I've sung a song I wrote had her own welfare program long before the government had theirs. She would make a huge pot of soup during the Depression, send the three kids around the town, they'd give soup to everybody. They lived their Christianity. They raised three children to the glory of God. All three of them served God with their lives. But the youngest was Milton, quiet spoken. And when his country called, he answered. Enlisted, went off to the Pacific Theater. After the war, I was going through some of his old clothes that were hanging down in the basement at Grandma and Grandpa's. There was his old army shirt. I took that army shirt. I wore that for the longest time. I tried to figure out why they would give, why the United States Army would give an army shirt to a soldier in World War II who was in the jungles of Papua New Guinea. I mean, a shirt that was made out of wool. You, you wonder about that, but that's, you know, that's, I guess they call that military intelligence. Is that what they call it? Yeah, something like that. He served faithfully, kept his standards. My grandparents prayed for him every day. He came back in one piece. My grandma would not allow his older sisters to clean his room or do anything to disturb anything until they got back safely. Four years later, he came back. Four years later. He never told me everything that went on. But I know that he served faithfully. I know that most of the casualties that took place in Papua New Guinea were because of disease and starvation. He saw a lot. He served as a part-time medic. He served in administration. And that's the, that's the kind of heritage that I look back at with, uh, with a measure of admiration and uh, thankfulness. The man was in a position, I'm sure many times, when the Imperial Japanese were sighting him up, ready to blow him away. God brought him back alive. Brought him back in one piece. Not everybody came back, but he came back. I asked him how things were, what it was like over there. And he would say this to me, Brad, courage is being the only one who knows you're afraid. In other words, you don't put out an advertisement. You just do your job. 
Just get up, do your job. I have an acrostic. If you want to take notes quickly, you that are viewing and you that are here, the C in courage starts with deep down conviction. Deep down conviction. There's got to be a reason for who we are and what we're doing. And the Word of God tells us that. So we need to get into the Word of God and stay in the Word of God and don't let anybody else divert us from that, distract us. The O in courage stands for a willingness to own a cause. That is to personalize it and say, this is my cause. Nobody may agree with you. That's not important. That you know who you are and what you're doing, why you're doing it, that's important. Truly making the cause yours is important. Step up. The U in courage stands for understanding who God is, who He is. We know God according to what the Bible says His attributes are. We know that God doesn't do anything capriciously. There is a purpose in everything He plans. The R in courage stands for a readiness, a preparedness to go now, now, now. Not five seconds, not ten seconds, not a minute, but now, now. Do not hesitate to do right. Do right always and do right now. The A stands for full acceptance of the consequences for our behavior and for our actions. Full acceptance. Yes, sir, I chose it. That's what I chose to do, sir. I accept full responsibility, sir. G, in courage, stands for giving, not taking. The blessing is in giving. The blessing, blessing is in sacrifice. That's where the rewards come, in sacrifice. The E that ends up the word courage stands for enthusiasm that defies the natural difficulties of the experience. A lot of people are driven by emotion. A lot of people are driven by the circumstances. But instead, we should be enthusiastic because we know that what we're doing is for the cause of Jesus Christ. They always wondered why those Christians went to their death in the arena in Rome, singing and praising God, went joyfully because they knew their God. They knew who they were and why they were there. They knew there was a purpose, and to them it wasn't so important that they live here and now, but that they live and die in the will of God. I say to you today, that we as born-again believers have the greatest opportunity in human history. In the darkest hour, we have the greatest opportunity to be the greatest blessing for the cause of Jesus Christ. Will you accept that calling? Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? You've been viewing a service at Central Baptist Church. We never dismiss the service without clearly presenting the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is, that Jesus came to this earth and sinlessly lived for 33 years before he voluntarily gave his life. He died on the cross, he was buried, he rose from the dead, and he's alive forevermore. Through the shedding of his blood and through his victory at uh, the, the empty tomb, Jesus Christ now offers salvation to you. The Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Would you pray right now from your heart to God and ask Him to save you? Something like this. Dear God, just pray, Dear God, I admit that I'm a sinner. I admit that I'm a sinner. I deserve to pay for my sins. I deserve to pay for my sins. I believe Jesus died to save me. I believe Jesus died to save me. Right now, I receive the Lord Jesus Christ into my heart as my personal Savior. Right now, I receive the Lord Jesus Christ into my heart as my personal Savior. Please take away my sins and take me to heaven when I die. Please take away my sins and take me to heaven when I die. Did you pray that prayer? Did you mean it? Wonderful. I want you to get in contact with us and let us know of your decision. Now, if you've already been saved, 
I want to encourage you to live the life that God would have you to live according to his word. If you desire more instruction, more information, we'll be happy to supply it to you. We like to talk to you. The information is right here, and we'd love to speak to you. If you have any spiritual needs whatsoever, may God bless you.